talking with Frank Morton from the Organic Seed Alliance, and he's on the board of directors. And here we are standing on Gathering Together Farms in Philomath, Oregon. Hi, Frank. How are you doing today? Thank you, Katie. Nice to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, so the Organic Seed Alliance, what is the Organic Seed Alliance exactly? Organic Seed Alliance is a nonprofit group that's working to essentially conserve our genetic resources for use by farmers. And we do this through an alliance of um, farmers, university scientists, and seed industry people that have an interest in providing quality orga organic seed to organic farmers. This is a parsley seed crop. We're growing this for seed. We'll sell it to seed companies and through our catalog. But it also, um, while this is in this stage, it's blooming right now, it's flowering, and you can see all these little insects that are attracted to these, these blossoms. Here's a surfed fly right here. Surfed flies uh, eat aphids. There are honeybees and solitary native bees on this. There's a ladybug right there, yep. Yeah. Uh, I saw a ladybug larva just a moment ago. So these parsley plants are a very good source for what beneficial insects need to complete their life cycles. Insects need nectar to give them the energy to fly around, and they need pollen to give them the protein that they need to lay eggs. And so some of the insects that are visiting these flowers, these parsley flowers, are uh, collecting pollen, they will eat that pollen and they will fly directly to a plant that has aphids on it. They'll know it by its smell and they will lay their, their um, eggs on that aphid infested plant. But they need the pollen from these flowers in order to complete that life cycle. So while we're growing seeds as an economic enterprise for this farm, look at all, look at everything happening right here. Um, we are also providing a pest control benefit for Gathering Together Farm as we are producing seeds. So this is your breeding ground, right? For seeds, this for the lettuce? We're standing right in the, in the middle of a little breeding plot of mine. Uh, we're actually surrounded by my seed production field. It's about, um, this is about two and a half acres. Uh, and in this one little section of it where we're standing is a place where I have a small breeding plot where I am looking at types of lettuce that I've recently developed and I'm seeing how they grow in an actual field situation here as opposed to in my breeding nursery. And these lettuces, um, you're standing between two rows of one variety that's a super dark red oak leaf. Uh, that does not get this disease called downy mildew. Downy mildew, if it were here, would be making these leaves very spotted. Uh, this variety right here seems to be completely resistant to it. Um, none of this stuff has got a name yet. Uh, the lettuce, they have different uses. You know, some of them are for making heads of lettuce like this. Others are for making salad greens, where the lettuce plants are just allowed to grow small and then cut that way. Mm -hmm. Others will make a head, more like an iceberg lettuce. But what they all have in common is that these plants were bred from the ground up within an organic system with the idea, with the goal, of creating a lettuce that performs better for organic growers who don't use chemicals to protect against disease this will give them a better, healthier crop. And because it's new to the market, it has a different appearance than what's in the market now. And so it will give organic growers actually something unique and novel and never seen before. This is a project that was actually inspired by farmer John Evelyn, uh, who one day commented as uh, organic Seed Alliance people were sitting around my table, John Evelyn says, well, you know what I want is I want a sugary enhanced sweet corn that has good cold soil emergence early in the season so that I can get my, so that I can have early corn on the market. And there is no such corn. 
uh, sugary enhanced corn, which is what he was referring to, is not good at emerging from cold soil. It tends to be attacked by soil organisms before it can grow through the soil. If you try to plant it early in the spring to get a good early crop. So, um, on John's suggestion, me and John Navazio at Organic Seed Alliance started this project on our own time around year 2001. John Navazio got some corn from uh, the corn breeding department at Wisconsin State. The head of that department is on our board of directors. His name's Bill Tracy, and he provided us with some corn to start with that he had been working on in, in Wisconsin. And Jim Myers is giving us that uh, sophistication in plant breeding and showing us how to judge the tenderness of the corn while still uh, collecting seed off of the very same ear that you're tasting. Uh, John Evelyn, the farmer who suggested the project in the first place, is going to be the corn taster. <laughs> and at some point in July, me and John and Michaela Colley of Organic Seed Alliance are going to go down these rows, and John is going to bite the ears and rate it for us on tenderness, and Michaela and I are going to mark the ones that John approves of, and those will be saved special for replanting next year. And so at that point, we should have a corn that is um, cold soil emergent, has good competition with weeds, is early in the season, has the tenderness that John needs at his markets, and um, we'll be well on our way toward having an organic corn especially for the Willamette Valley, and that's what we want to do. And I've try, I am trying to encourage farmers to essentially pick up on the selection process right then and make their final selection on their organic farm. Then that lettuce or that kale or whatever it is will better suit their place if they do the final three selections than if mm -hmm. I do it. Organic farmers seem to be very hungry for this knowledge. The seed industry has always been an extremely secretive industry, essentially in hopes of having some sort of a monopoly on the seed supply. We don't think that's a very good idea. Uh, we're, we believe in openness regarding seeds and in sharing information regarding seeds, how to do the breeding, what plant varieties make excellent parents. We want to spread this information, not keep it to ourselves. And that makes us a little different than than the industry as a whole. But what we're trying to do in this whole process is to create what would essentially be an open source system of seed where the final products are actually developed in a community effort. It's no one individual doing all the work. It's community work. And when the work is done, it belongs to everybody. The problem with the public domain is that in seeds, we have seen over and over things that are put into the public domain today can later be tweaked the smallest amount by the seed industry and then claimed as their product, shutting us out of further development of that variety. This concept of open source seeds, anybody can use it. Anybody can use it to create new varieties. Anybody can grow it and sell it. We just saw earlier at the farm yeah. about the pod of the mustard seed. How do you separate the seed from the pod and really just get it down to the final product? Well, after threshing the plants in the field, uh, it looks something like this. This would be mustard seed. And it's a mixture of um, the seed pod and the seed. And so always when we're, it's very low tech, always when we're cleaning seed, it's an alternation between using the wind to winnow and using a screen to separate things by size. And the size separation part is as simple as pouring the seed through a screen. And this can be a screen that you make yourself, just like this one. And this becomes compost. And you're left with um, a mixture of small, small chaff 
and seeds. A little bit of it all in there. Mm -hmm. And if, even with just a little natural wind, and very little practice, you can separate the chaff from the seed. So this is it, huh? The final products of, I mean, this is the seed. This is it. That's what it's all about. And that's what OSA is all about. The ethical stewardship of the seed resource. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Frank, for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. I had a great time on the yeah. farm and everything. Good. Hope Thanks. to see you again. Right. Definitely. Thank you. And I'm Katie Wood, bringing you the tools to make you more sustainable today.